Hey guys, what is going on? It is me, Box 12 here, and welcome back to another Realm of the Mad God Dungeon Guide video. In the spirit of Halloween, we'll be taking a look into yet another spooky locale, namely, the Cursed Library. This time with our one-eyed friend, the Beholder, dropping the portal of interest. So just head on over to Godlands, keep an eye out for what I can only describe as Mike Wazowski with a tan, and snag that portal if it happens to drop. Once inside, things may look a little familiar. The candles, bookshelves, and carpets should all be very reminiscent of the manner of the Immortals. And once you find out that the library was attacked and cursed by Lord Ruthven, it makes all the more sense. However, it also has its share of similarities to the Mad Lab, as evident by the pillars sticking out of the ground and a hidden second boss activated only by pressing all of the pressure plates found throughout the dungeon. Its difficulty could also be considered a fusion of the two. Nothing too hard for a fully maxed character, but it certainly has its own dangers for the newcomer. Like any other dungeon in this game, it's always wise to approach a new room and draw out the closest threats before going all the way in. That way you'll never find yourself overwhelmed or unprepared. Enemies are divided into two very simple groups, big and small. It's nothing we haven't seen before, but the designs and attacks are all quite unique. First up is the Eye of the Edified, who interestingly is always paired up with a Deholder, orbiting around it with a small white radial burst attack, inflicting darkness to all caught within it. And at regular intervals, it'll charge the nearest player before returning to its post. It may look intimidating, but this is really a simple case of timing through observation. Take note of how quickly it charges and anticipate the next time it lunges after you. Now get back. The accompanying Deholder is even less of a threat. While its single projectile is powerful and appropriately causes bleeding, it moves so slowly and isolated that you should almost never get hit by it. Its design, on the other hand, is possibly the most graphic sprite depiction we have in the game. This is an actively bleeding eye socket that still opens and closes a little when it moves. <laughs> Anytime one of these big enemies is killed, aside from the eyeball with wings, a bunch of vile maggots get left behind. They're easy enough to clear out and won't hurt you unless you intentionally walk through them, but sometimes they'll just be hanging out in random rooms ahead of time. The soulless student, aside from being relatable, is one of the faster enemies with a wavy scythe Attack. But if you keep moving around and are never directly in front of it, you actually won't get hit. It's pretty sweet. The Soulless Scribe is similar in the sense that, wow, that was a lot of S's. You also have to stay on the move to dodge the icy slowing streams, but unless you can stand really far back to move in between the gaps, circling is your best bet. Poltergeists are pretty weak, so I wouldn't sweat them, although they can curse you and have really erratic movements, so if you want to kill them fast, get them alone so you can focus them down. Next up are the Lips of the Lost, and... <laughs> I'm sorry, it... Is that supposed to be a literal pair of lips that has been removed from a face and is now lost roaming the library? <laughs> where, where, where do I sign? The damage is decent for sure, but the predictable spiral attack leaves itself wide open once it's on the other side. After a couple rotations, it'll charge the nearest player, but I always killed it before it even got to that point, and I'm sure you can do the same. But get this, apparently on rare circumstances, it will shout the word tertiary and then explode. I don't even know where to begin with that one. The Soulless Scholar is the last of our tiny enemies and can be kind of annoying because of its slow and inward curving projectiles, sort of like the Horror Maw. So you have to stand either really close or really far away to avoid the dangerous midsection. However, if you're able to push it into a wall, then it won't be able to move and it becomes an easy kill. Hand of the Helpless is a straight up wall master from Zelda, but uh, thankfully it's not. This is actually the most fascinating enemy in the dungeon because it has three different attacks that are rock, paper, scissors themed. When it makes a fist, it'll throw out copies of its hand that explode upon touching the ground into, I want to say, a 180 damage radius. Until it reaches the ground, though, it can't hurt you, so you can run right through it. When it does paper with its hand flat, it'll shoot a bunch of single 95 damage armor-piercing shots. They're pretty spaced out, so if you wiggle in place, you'll be fine, but eventually it fires out a V-shaped quintuple shot, which in narrow hallways can be near impossible to avoid. So I'd advise keeping back during this phase. When he sticks out two fingers for scissors, though, not only is he asking for a lawsuit, but these two walls of confusing inward curving fingernail shots cover the area in front of you. The only way to dodge it is to step to the far left or right, assuming space permits. And be alert for his sudden charge after the bullets stop, as you'll have to reposition yourself to evade properly next time. The Headless Spectre is our big boss minion with an aggressive, explosive attack. Now, in spite of its impressive damage, because of the limited range, you can outrun every one of its attacks at a moderate pace. That's not really the problem. The biggest danger comes mainly from your surroundings. Not being aware of any walls that you might get pushed up against with nowhere to run or getting distracted by other enemies. That should be your biggest fear. The Enlightened Beholder is identical to the regular Beholders found in Godlands, but with darker skin and this sheer look of disappointment in his eye. 
Like, he's not even mad at you, he's just like, really? You gotta see in gym? No, oh, Dad, please, it's not like that. Lastly, we have the Bookworm, who's a bit tough to fight on melees because of the widespread book bash, that is its actual name. So you have to employ the classic drag and lure technique to fake out the shots, or just use a ranged character. When it gets to low health, it'll flash red and increase its size with an even more powerful attack, but it runs away from you when you get close, further emphasizing the melee disadvantage. But that does it for all the enemies. We've got a really cool cast of characters this time around with some tricky patterns, but Overall, if you take them one-on-one, -on -one, it's no trouble at all. All that's left now are the bosses. Avalon, the Archivist, awaits us in the middle of this large square room broken up into four quadrants of nine smaller squares in total. Once activated, Avalon will begin running around one of the far corners, in my case, the top right, and will then mirror that on his next path and go bottom left. I'm not sure if this pattern is consistent or if it's based on the player's location, but I was getting it every time when standing in the same general area, so I'm not sure. Either way, he leaves behind a trail of blue slowing stars and will stop at each of the nine squares to drop a stack of books that explode into this really cool looking line of energy that have a gap somewhere in it for you to go through. There's also a larger AoE attack that gets thrown in at the same time, and it will snag you if you're too close to the entrance. Now, I'm pretty sure the intent of this phase was to either chase or be chased by Avalon while attacking him, but you can stand all the way at the entrance and wait for him to come to you, hit him a couple times, then wait some more, putting you at zero risk. You never have to leave this hallway. Yeah, it takes longer, but if you're really concerned about taking damage and don't want to hug the walls and run from Avalon, this is a really easy alternative. In fact, it honestly feels like something that should be patched. At least a little bit. Maybe it's not necessary, I don't know, I'm just talking. When pushed into phase two, he'll return to the middle and begin throwing more book bombs down each hallway. Wait for the blast radius to clear up and move into one of the hallways so you can get a clear shot of Avalon. You'll notice now that those cool neon light beams are coming from both sides of you. So, a lot like in the Nidarian Reef, it's about holding that middle ground of not being too close or backing up too far into the danger behind you. This is also where playing on center would be very advantageous, as it was really easy to dodge the beams in front of me, but I had little to no time to evade the ones below below simply due to the limited vision. In his final phase, he'll spawn more scribes, scholars, and students, which I highly recommend clearing out because the slows will be quite the crutch. In the meantime, he'll keep planting those book bombs, which are all marked on the minimap, and running around like before. And just like phase one, you can chill out in one spot and wait for him to come around if you don't feel like chasing him. And if you've cleared out the minions, it's a pretty easy time. It is a mid-tier dungeon after all, so we're not expecting anything too difficult here. But we're not actually done just yet. After dying, the Realm Eye speaks in chat, imploring us to find all the corrupt pressure plates to release him, which graciously have all been marked on the minimap. So unlike the Mad Lab, you don't have to go looking for some random room that you may or may not have forgotten to clear. Plus, there's only like four or five of these things, so it's no hassle at all. I think one is always guaranteed to be in this maze-like room. It has that main set piece feel to it. It stands out amongst all the other rooms. When all the plates are pressed, you head all the way back to the spawn room where a narrow corridor has revealed itself leading to the Corruption Phantom mini-boss. And it's actually a really strong fight. It's even more difficult than Avalon, the main boss. First off, the room is really small, so we've already got limited limited mobility, in addition to a clockwise spiraling attack for 140 damage apiece that caused 6, so that's a pretty big penalty on its own. Plus, you've got all these minions with different attack patterns constantly chasing you that you're required to kill to make the boss vulnerable, so your only option to get through this unscathed is by circling in either direction you prefer. I did both clockwise and counterclockwise, and neither seemed to be more difficult or easy than the other. Above all else, you just want to avoid the boss's main shots because those are the only ones that sicken. In its second and final phase, its body will have shrunk so it gets a little closer to the walls and fires a more tight-knit spiral with no way to move in between the shots, so circling is even more mandatory. And be prepared for when it changes direction midway, I know that'll trip people up. Also, keep in mind, if at any point the fight becomes too hectic, which is very understandable with how much stuff is flying around and the fact that you're fighting a literal blood clot waiting to stroke out, you can always retreat back through that small passageway to heal up. Just wait for any stray bombs to clear up before heading back in. But that's really all there is to it. Once the Phantom is dead, the Realm Eye will be freed, and he talks about how he's been a spectator since ancient times. And what's really cool is that you can ask him about various enemies or dungeons in the game, and he'll provide you some lore and backstory on it. You can only ask him one thing before he disappears, and you can just look it all up on Realm Eye the website if you want, but it's still a really cool inclusion to have, and a very appropriate place for it, I might add. It's another one of those things, they didn't have to put him in here. I mean, you could take the Realm Eye out of the dungeon, and it would be the same thing. 
but they went that extra mile and gave us some more stuff. For the time that you put into it, the Cursed Library has some pretty good loot. It's a good source of wisdom, vitality, and even attack, as well as the standard high-tier gear items and, of course, those delicious white bag UTs. Overall, the Cursed Library, while I may have only done a handful so far, is quickly becoming one of my favorite dungeons in the game, especially for a mid-tier one. It's nice to see them pour a lot of effort and creativity into something that's not even endgame. It just goes to show that it doesn't have to be the hardest thing in the world to still be pretty enjoyable. That's all I've got for you today. Thank you guys so much for watching, have a happy Halloween, and as always, don't forget to check out the next episode whenever I post it, which will probably be soon. Alright, see ya.